people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those who are living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Well, a happy Christmas to you all. My name's Simon. I'm uh, the assistant minister here at St. James. Uh, and welcome again. Yes, a happy Christmas. Or at least, um, I hope it'll be a happy Christmas for you. Uh, some of you might be dreading it, having to spend all that time with your family in close quarters. For some, the pressure of spending all of that time with husbands and wives and families becomes a bit too much. There is a reason why just after Christmas is one of the peak times of the year for people going to see a divorce lawyer. Or, or you may look at the world and think, well, there's not much to be happy about, is there? There's war in Ukraine, war in Israel and Gaza, political uncertainty in this country, and many others as well. And many, many families, many of we whom you well know, are struggling to make ends meet. That's a bit dark for a Christmas talk, isn't it? Happy Christmas! But the world is a dark place. Whether it's on a global level or in our own individual lives, whether it's things that you see in the news or things that only you might know about. At Christmas, we, we might want to forget these things for a while. We want to break from the darkness, literally. We cover the tree with fairy lights. We have candles all over the house, but it's not enough. The world is a dark place. And that's the starting point for the last reading that we just had. It is a Christmas reading, but it might be one that you've not seen before. You know the usual story, the baby in the manger, the wise men, the shepherds, the angels. Those parts of Jesus' biography come at the start of the part of the Bible that we call the New Testament. But Jesus must be the only person in history whose biography started to be written 700 years before he was born. The nativity stories that we know so well, they tell us what happened when Jesus came. But those older parts of the Bible, like that reading from Isaiah, they're the origin story. They tell us why Jesus came. And the world that Isaiah was writing to, well, that was a dark place as well. In fact, it sounds quite familiar. The people at the time were in the middle of a long period of war in the Middle East. They were about to be conquered by a big, aggressive neighbour. But Isaiah said, a time will come when those people will see a great light. A new dawn will arrive. And this new dawn was going to come in the form of a person sent by God, but not a conquering king or a great warrior. No, no. This person, even though the government of all the world would rest on their shoulders, this person at first would come as a child. And 700 years later, the people that were watching out for that person recognised him. Biographers like Matthew and Luke, they realised that these words from their ancient past applied to the man that they were writing about, Jesus. So who is this child that Isaiah said would have the weight of the world on his shoulders? Who is Jesus? Well, in our reading, Isaiah tells us four things about him. First of all, Isaiah says he's going to be a wonderful counsellor. 
Now, why do we turn to counsellors? Well, it might be because we need help rebuilding relationships. It might be we need someone walking alongside us as we try and mend damaged lives. And God sent Jesus to mend broken relationships, to put right damaged lives. The sort of relationships that might wreck a Christmas. The sort of damage that might lead to war. But if, if you or I go to a counsellor, then they're not allowed to get too involved with us, are they? They need to keep their professional distance from all of our problems. But God's not like that. God wants to get involved in this messed up world. Because this God, who is a wonderful counsellor, is also an everlasting Father. The Father God who made for us and cares for us and protects us and gets involved in this messed up world by giving us the gift of a child. A child? How's a child going to help? Well, the person that we see in this passage, the child who is coming, is that one and the same mighty God. God himself was coming, not just a messenger, not just a representative, This Jesus that was coming was God's own son. He's perfectly human, a baby in a manger, but he's also fully God. One of the other biographers of Jesus, John, um, we heard this reading a bit earlier, he, he put it very poetically when he wrote, and he said this, the word, which is another way of describing Jesus, the word became flesh and lived among us. And as the carol that we've just sung says, he came down from earth to from he came down to earth from heaven who is God and Lord of all. And mighty God to boot, not just any god, God the ruler over all creation, God the maker of the whole universe, the one true and only God. What Isaiah was talking about 700 years before Jesus was even born wasn't just a rescue plan for the people of Israel. It was a revolution for the whole creation and everyone who lives in it for the whole of time. But why rescue? The world might be dark. We might be excited that God is coming to sort these problems out. But why do I keep talking about a rescue? Well, you need to understand what the real problem is. There's a deeper problem that is at the heart of this pain that we see. There's a deeper problem at the root of the problems in our families that is behind the hatred in wars, that is the cause of the damage that we're doing to our planet. And that problem is us. Specifically, the problem is our sin. Now, sin's not a word you hear very much these days. Might be making you feel a bit uncomfortable. Sin isn't just doing things wrong. It's not just breaking the law. There aren't big sins like robbery and little sins like being rude to someone. No, no, no. Sin describes your attitude, your actions, everything about you that comes from that fundamental decision that you have taken to go a different way from the way that God intended. Now, you might be sitting there at this point thinking, that's a bit harsh. What right has Simon got to say that about me? How can he be so confident that I'm like this? Well, I know because the Bible tells us that everyone has sinned. Me, you, the person sitting next to you, even our vicar Laura. This is why... We are people walking in darkness as well. We choose to live without God. We choose to fight against the God who made us and gives us everything that we have. And that puts up a a massive barrier between us and God. And that is why, even with all of our efforts, even with some amazingly good and clever and persistent and energetic people in science and politics and medicine and caring and peacemaking, even with all of that, we still can't solve the problems that we see around us. The world is still a dark place and there is nothing that we can do about it. 
The reason we are in darkness is our fault. It is our sin. It is our rebellion against God. But, but there is good news. The reason that this can be a happy Christmas is that this child that is born to us is also the Prince of Peace. Jesus can bring peace into lives that are damaged. Jesus can bring reconciliation in relationships between people in even countries. But most important of all, Jesus has come to put right the relationship between us and the God who made us. The Prince of Peace comes because God is working on a cosmic level, but he also gives me and you a chance, each one of us, to have that relationship with our Creator again. And how exactly does that happen? Well, that's the end of the story. This Jesus that Isaiah talked about, the Jesus that we're singing about, the baby in the manger, that same Jesus died on a cross 30 years later. And that is how he bought peace between us and God. Jesus lived a perfect life. He never sinned. He never rejected his father. And when he was killed on that cross at the first Easter, he didn't deserve to die. And because he took all the punishment, and because he then lived, that means that we can have that relationship back. And there's nothing that we can do to repair that relationship with God. God's done it all by sending a child, by giving us a son to die for us. But even Easter is not the end of the story. Some of you might have spotted a flaw in my argument here because you've realised that in spite of the Prince of Peace coming down at Christmas to earth, this world is still a mess. There's still war. People still turn away from God. You and I are still too proud to say that we need God in our lives. But there is more good news to come because the Prince of Peace will come again. And this time it won't be as a baby. It'll be in full view as that mighty God that Isaiah told us about. But in the meantime, we do have a chance to enjoy that peace with God right now. That offer is there for all. But remember, this is the mighty God that we're dealing with here. This is not an offer that we can take lightly. God demands a response. There is nowhere to hide. So if you've never really thought about this before, what is it that you could do? How can you take up God on his offer of peace? A few things. First of all, you need to realise that this did actually happen. The fact that Jesus lived on earth, it's not a myth, it's not a fairy story, it's not even a good moral tale. So you could start off by checking out the facts of what Jesus did when he was here on earth. The next thing you could do is consider just how important that is. You need to realise that the baby that was born at Christmas was the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He came to rescue the whole world. He was born because God loves you and Jesus died because he wants to forgive you and repair that relationship between you and God. And then, if after all that you realise this is true, and I do at least urge you to consider it, then the final thing that you need is to do something about it. There's an offer waiting for you from the Prince of Peace, an offer to take you out of darkness and bring light back into your lives. But you need to accept that as well as the Prince of Peace, he is also the mighty God. He's in charge. And you need to admit that Maybe you haven't followed God, and maybe you need to change. That's really hard. That might take you some time. But if you'd like to start off by knowing a bit more about that story, come talk to me afterwards. Come and talk to Laura or Jenny or any of the team here at the church. Take away one of our little booklets that we've got telling you a bit more about what Christmas means and what Jesus has done for you. Think about that as we sing 
our last few carols. Think about it particularly as we think about darkness, as we dim the lights in a moment, as we bring the candle up and as we light our candles as we sing the last few carols together. Think about the darkness and see the light in those candles, the light that Jesus brings to this world. So after all that, can I wish you a happy Christmas? I think I can. Because the Prince of Peace has come, the mighty God is here, and he wants you to say yes to him.